valiant effort, but you never stood a chance. You see, I'm not a queen or a monster. I'm the goddess of death. What were you the god of again? This video is brought to you by GamersGrass.com. Hi and welcome to Gamers Web. Um, my name is Mark and today I'm going to carry on my look at the Marvel Crisis Protocol miniature game expansions. Uh, we're uh, going to look today at CP12 which is Loki and Hela for the uh, Asgardian faction which is the um, latest new faction for the game. Okay so I'm just going to jump straight in and we'll crack on. Okay so here we have Loki and Hela on the front of the uh, box. And um, I must point out that these are actually depictions of Loki and Hela as taken in the comics, like most of the stuff from Marvel Crisis Protocol, not from the movies, because uh, the backgrounds are slightly different. Okay, so Loki and Hela, mischief and mayhem are coming. Adopted son of Odin and half-brother to Thor, Loki Lafison was, has long coveted the throne of Asgard. A master of sorcery and illusion, Loki has earned his title as the god of mischief. Uh, thus, Loki is often fought against his brother Thor and many of Earth's greatest champions. He has at times joined forces with them as well when it serves his own ends. As a daughter of Loki and Asgardian goddess of death, Hela rules over the realms of Hel and the Nephilim, holding sway over the souls of all the deceased Asgardians. With command over the powers of death, Hela has set her high upon expanding her domain across the nine realms. Includes one Hela miniature, one Loki miniature, two bases, Two character stack cards, two team tactic cards, and 15 tokens. And as always, miniatures supplied, unpainted, and unassembled. Okay, so you notice there straight away, this says the daughter of Loki, right? So Hela is the daughter of Loki in uh, Asgardian, uh, not North mythology, uh, rather than being uh, Odin's daughter and Loki's half sister, Thor's half sister. Okay, so let's just go crack in. Okay, uh, so. Interesting change how they did things in the Marvel movies compared to the actual comic books because the comic books are more actually in line with the mythos um, probably because when Walt Simpson um, did uh, a lot of the stuff in the 1970s and early 80s the guy is like very very into uh, his Norse mythology as you'll find out if you look through my review okay so um I'm going to have a quick look at the thing and then I'll have my full review and breakdown on Gamers Web. Now, I was hoping to get uh, do this in a different way. I was hoping to get um, a Valkyrie and um, that's everything uh, Valkyrie and uh, Thor first, but unfortunately, uh, due to distribution problems uh, here in the UK, um, Valkyrie and Thor didn't come. Uh, on time and I got uh, Hella and Loki and I also still waiting on Winter Soldier and Vision. Okay, okay, right, so this is the obligatory read this first. This tells you um, what you can and can't do and it also has a new thing here called uh, Infinity Gems. Okay, so um, this is quite important. You'll need to keep hold of this because this tells you how to use your Infinity Gems for the characters that can carry them. And one of the characters comes with this set, which is Loki. Okay, so some characters in Crisis Protocol have uh, the innate superpower Gem Burra. Uh, this superpower allows the character to wield a mighty Infinity Gem. This superpower is listed with other keywords uh, on the character's stack card and indicates which gems the character may have. Each character may only have one Infinity Gem at a time. To have the option of including Infinity Gems in your squad, you must first include them in your roster. Each Infinity Gem is treated as a character when building your roster. So you will choose a total of 10 characters and Infinity Gems combined. A character that has an Infinity Gem increases its threat value by the amount listed on the Infinity Gems card. Place the Infinity Gem card next to the character's stat card to show that they are in possession of the gem. Each roster may contain only one of each infinity gem. During the power phase, a character with an infinity gem gains one additional, excuse me, one additional power gem, uh, power per gem they have, although it just says you can only have one. Uh, each infinity gem grants the character uh, that has that its unique superpower for a non-gems card. Okay, so it says you can only have one uh, infinity gem uh, at once. Uh, no one can have more than one. The exception to that is gonna be um, anybody who's got a Finity Gauntlet um, because that allows you to carry 
all six Infinity Gems. Okay, so um, we've got the assembly guide uh, for Loki and Hela here. Uh, Loki seems to be pretty straightforward. He's just got like two horns, um, two arms, one arm goes onto his staff, legs go onto his torso, and he stands on his base because he's still on a, a nice base. Hela, unfortunately, um, I've heard a couple of things, reports on the Facebook groups that Hella's head is a bit of a pain to assemble because it's um, more than one piece, uh, more than two pieces. As you can see, it's quite a few pieces there. And um, that you can't really assemble her on the base without using the flames that she's rising up from, um, which without major conversion, which is a bit of a pain, really. I don't like the actual pose. That's probably the weakest of all the poses for any of the characters so far. That's in my own opinion anyway. Okay, so that's a quick look at that. So um, we'll look at the plastic first and then we'll look at the cards. Okay, right, so two sprues. Now, it did say you get two bases, but you don't. You actually get six bases. Um, as when the guys did the unboxing, they showed you get two of the large bases for Hella. So you can choose which ones you want to use. And then you get four bases to use for Loki, which is, um, it's a good thing actually giving extra bases because um, you can base other miniatures on them. Uh, I've got my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, they're based on uh, these bases because I'm going to be using them in the game at some point um, just for a bit of fun. Okay, right, so here we have uh, Hella. I'm uh, just um Zoom in so you can see the detail. The detail's fantastic. Her face is very, very good. Now, this is Hella with a full-on um, war headgear. It's quite very fine, so I would use a pair of snips, a pair of decent quality snips to actually get the things out. And be very careful around these edges here that you don't actually break anything. Um, attention to detail on it is actually fantastic. Um, if you just try and zoom in a little bit more so you can actually see that you know, really good quality. Um, great. As much as it's daunting me because of my vision, <laughs> not the character, uh, but my eyesight, I'm actually looking forward to building this. Uh, I'm really looking forward to building Thor and um, Valkyrie. Um, and Loki, actually. Okay, so that's Hela. And here we have Loki. Again, um, if you've got the patience and you've got the eyesight to do it, I strongly suggest gluing, uh, pinning his hand to his arm. Uh, if not, just glue it with some good strong super glue or something like that. And um, the, again, little tiny, tiny fiddly things, you know, these go on the front of Loki's helmet. Um, they're tiny, they're just like almost non-existent. But, you know, there is horns, they go on his helmet. And it would have been easier to cast them this way than actually casting them on the helmet. Now, this is probably one of the best facial details on most of the Marvel Crisis figures at the moment. Because this does look very much like Loki from the comics. Again, looking forward to painting these. Really am. Okay, so, um, that's for painting, I think. I'm um, going to be a white undercoat with, um, most likely, going to use... Uh, What's it called? Um, contrast paints. Um, okay, so we get more cards in this one than normal because we get our um, infinity card, our gem card. Uh, we'll look at the cardboard first. So we get um, our Asgardian tokens, and then we get our um, uh, Souls of the Dead tokens, Bleed tokens, and I think that's a Freeze token, I'm not sure. Um, but we get um, all these tokens. These are the Asgardian faction tokens. And then we have our two cards for our characters, which we'll look at in a moment. And we have three cards. Okay, so um, first one is uh, we have the Infinity Gem uh, card, Sibling Rivalry, and Doom Prophecy. Okay, so um, I'm going to save Sibling Rivalry for a, for a while um, because there's a wee story attached to that. Um, okay, so Doom Prophecy with um, artwork by... Uh, Anon Kubert and Frank Diamata. Um, looks quite good. So, kind of trying to make out what it is. <laughs> oh, it's uh, Mjolnir that's been cracked. All oh, right. 
Chateau Mionia. Right, okay, so this is an unaffiliated card and it's reactive. At the start of the activation phase, any allied character may spend three power to play this card. This character cannot roll defense dice against uh, physical attacks. Additionally, this character adds dice to its physical attacks equal to its physical defense uh, until the beginning of its next activation. So if you've got someone like Thor who's got a physical defense of four um, and you plan to spend this card. Um, Thor is going to be adding an extra four dice um, to his physical attacks, and since he's already got like you know like <laughs> he's got a dice, one of his attacks is like seven or eight. He's going to be doing a heck of a lot of damage. Uh, good card, good one to have, especially if you play it on somebody like Hulk. Oh, that would be absolutely nasty, seeing as Hulk generates so much power. Okay, so, um, mentioned right at the beginning of the view that um, Loki is a gem bearer, so he comes with um, the mind gem. There's a nice picture of the mind gem, with artwork by uh, Andrew Kramer. This increases his threat level by one, so Loki's threat level will go up to uh, four, I think it is. No, his threat level will go up to five. And then, um, the mind gem... It costs two power to use. Choose any enemy any enemy character within range three and advance it short. This superpower may only be used once per turn. So basically you control people and you can advance them in any direction you want. Okay, so this is the card that um, has got the story attached to it. Okay, so a few weeks ago when um, the guys from uh, Atomic Mask Games did the unboxing, of this on the live stream over on Twitch, which I'll put a link down to uh, the Twitch channel uh, as always in the review. Um, they mentioned this card, uh, Sibling Rivalry. It's unaffiliated. If Thor, Prince of Asgard, is within range two of an allied Loki god of mischief, both, char both characters may spend one power to play this card. Throw the Loki god of mischief medium. The Loki god of mischief does not suffer collision damage during this throw. Enemy characters that he uh, collides with uh, roll two fewer dodge dice and suffer the staggered special condition. Okay, so this is called Sibling Rivalry. It's got really good artwork on the front. <laughs> Loki being tossed at Green Goblin by Thor uh, by Greg Smallwood. Fantastic card. Now, in the chat, whilst this uh, live stream was going on, as soon as they mentioned sibling rivalry, and I think it was Dallas Kemp, or it could have been Will Shake, started reading the details of the card. All you saw in the car in the in the chat was get help, get help, get help. About sixty times, just people screaming and going nuts in the chat because basically this is the get help card from uh, Thor Ragnarok when um, Loki throws, oh, sorry, Thor throws Loki out of the. Um, lift when they get out of the lift at on Shakar. Fantastic card. And it means that Loki's quite nasty. Uh which is great great fun. This is really keeping with the Marvel theme which I really like. Okay, so I'm gonna look at Hella first because um Hella's slightly different than um Loki. Okay, so she's got a um stamina of six on a healthy side, movement of medium. She's a height two because she's a, a normal size person. She's uh, got a threat level of four and then uh, like most of the Asgardians, she, apart from Loki, she's got, because he's not an Asgardian, um, she's got um, a uh, physical, a mystical and an energy of four. So very, very good at defending themselves. Okay, um, her strike is Hellforge Blade, which got a range of two, rolls five dice and costs no power. After this attack is resolved, this character gains power equal to the power dealt. You've got bleed after this attack is, uh, this is on a wild. After this attack is resolved, the target character gains a bleed special condition, which again is pretty good. Um, she's got claim soul, which is a mystical attack. Uh, it's got range four. It's got roll six dice and cost two power. If this attack deals uh, power, after the attack is resolved, this character gains one sc captured soul token, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, and then she's got range of range of rain of hell, uh, which is a physical attack. It's got a range of three, seven um, dice damage, costs four power, which is quite a lot. But 
as you'll see in a moment, it's not. <laughs> and if this target, uh, if the character has a bleed special condition, uh, it does not count wilds as successes when defending against this attack. And if he rolls a wild, it's explosive before damage is dealt. Other enemy characters are in range two of this target, so for one damage. Okay, so that's quite nasty because that's uh, like unleashing the all the fires of hell on um, people. Okay, uh, and then she's got Army of L. Discard one to three soul ca captured soul tokens during the next attack made by this character this turn. Add one die to its attack roll for each captured soul token that was discarded. If a captured soul token was discarded after the attack was resolved, the target character gains the bleed special condition. This superpower can only be used once per turn, and it costs no power. Okay, so if you've gone through the game and you've amassed three or four um, captured souls, which is quite easy for her to do, and you play this, then you play all, th you say play the maximum, which is three, and then you use Reign of Hell, which costs you four power, you're rolling 10 dice to start off with, which is very, very good. Or you're rolling eight dice for Hellforge Blade, or nine dice for Claim Soul which is, again, pretty good. And if you roll the nine dice for Claim Soul, um, you're basically... Uh, <laughs> you're just going to be getting your, your, your Claim Souls back again. Okay, uh, now this is why it doesn't cost too much for um, Hela. Uh, she's an Asgardian, and during the power phase, all Asgardian characters gain one additional power. And our other always-on ability, she's the Goddess of Death, when another character is dazed or KO, this character gains a captured soul token. This uh, character may have a maximum of three captured soul tokens at any one time. So basically, Hela just basically gets harder and harder the more people get knocked out around her. Okay, that's her on injured side. And uh, on her injured side, it's more or less the same. Um, she's still got... Oh, so she's gone down by um, six to four on her... Um, Stamina, but everything else is the same. The Hellforge Blail, the Claim, Claim Soul, um, Reign of Hell, they're all the same. Army of Hell, Queen of Hell, Asgardian, Goddess of Death, they're all exactly the same. Um, although there is something extra on there. All right, yes, there we go, Queen of Hell. Okay, so this character has captured three captured soul tokens. When it will be coyote, you may use these, uh, this superpower, remove all damage and capture soul tokens from this character it is not KO'd and it costs no power so basically she's got a get out of jail 3 card and you can use this constantly um, so you could if you got 3 tokens and you take it off the only way to get rid of her is she, you take all 3 soul tokens off and then somebody else attacks her and because she's got no defence she can't defend against it right Hella very very hard character and the big boy himself, Loki, god of mischief. Loki laughs at him because he's the son of Lofi, the uh, frost giant. He's got a uh, stamina of five, uh, it's medium movement. Uh, his height is average human, so it's two, and he's got a threat of four. So remember, if he does, if he's got the ring or the gem, he's a um, threat of five. And then he's got a physical and a energy defense of three and a mystical defense of four. He's got strike, which is range two, five dice damage, cost no power. After this this attack is resolved, um, he gains power for each damage dealt. Got a frost blast, which is an energy attack. It's got a beam, uh, beam attack of three. So basically it goes in a straight line and rolls um, at range three with the, the three ruler. Um, he's got um, four dice damage and it does uh, cost no power. And again, uh, if this attack deals damage after the attack is resolved, the target gains the slow special condition, which is very, very good because um, any, any special conditions you can put against your opponents are always really, really advantageous towards you. And then he's got illusions, uh, which is range four, uh, does six damage and costs three power. And if he rolls double wild, um, after it gets mesmerized, after this attack is resolved, you may advance the target uh, character at speed. After the advance is resolved, all other characters within range two of that target suffer one damage. So um, 
you got Black Widow coming up to you. You cast this, you move Black Widow long out of the way. And that's going to be really, really annoying to actually... Um, especially since it's got a range of four. That's going to be really annoying to get people off objectives. Okay, so um, he's got um, I Am A God, which it costs two power. Before rolling uh, attack die or defense dice, you may use this superpower. During the attack, this character adds blanks to its attack or defense rolls as to its total successes. So it only fails on skulls. Um, and it only costs two power. And again, remember, he's getting one additional power every turn because he's an Asgardian. If he's got the gem, he's getting two. So, you, you know, it's a bit of a no-brainer. You could do it every single turn. Uh, Trickster. Cost three power. When this character is targeted by an attack, you may use this superpower. This character makes a small advance. If at the end of the activation, uh, this advance, the character is outside of the attack's range or attacker's line of sight, the attack ends. If the attacker's activation, an attack did not target multiple characters, this attacker, the attacker may make another action. This superpower can be used once per turn. So it basically, um, it, it's like when he casts his illusion and he just um, appears as like four or five different people uh, in a crowd. Uh, as Guardian, as mentioned, he gets an extra power. God of Mischief, um, which is one of his always on powers. Um, once within range four of this character, enemy characters must spend one power before using any ranged or um, innate superpowers, oh, sorry, reactive superpowers. And um, his special is Gem Burra. Uh, and he's got two, he's got Mind and Space, although you only get Mind in the set, um, because um, that's lucky. Okay, so um, the rest of his cards are exactly the same on the back. Um, uh, medium, yep, nothing changes on his cards on the back. So that's a quick look at Loki and Hella. Um, really looking forward to this uh, faction, because um, there's loads and loads of stuff coming out for Marvel Crisis Protocol and um, some of the characters are just like going to be phenomenal and Asgardians have always been like top of my list of favourite characters My one of my favourite Marvel characters of all time is Beta Ray Bill and um, hopefully he'll be coming towards I'd say probably like wave 3 or wave 5 or 6 probably um, they've announced Angela because she's on the Asgardian faction card um, which comes with a Thor and Valkyrie set. Um, Angela is um, basically the amalgamation of Hela in the Marvel movies, uh, is exactly what happened in the comic books. Angela was a character from um, another comic book that came over to Marvel um, because uh, her creators, she was created by Todd McFarlane and um, someone else who I can't remember, and Basically, uh, it was for the Angron comics, which was an amalgamation of Marvel and DC. And um, she came over to uh, Marvel when um, some big fracas went on. But I'll, I'll go more in depth than that when uh, we get down to the uh, review. Right, so that's a quick look at um, this characters for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Um, as a quick aside, um, we're going to be doing some reviews of some bases very shortly from the guys at uh, Game of Grass over in uh, Portugal. Um, they've got some on the way. They make uh, a great range of proxy bases that are already painted and textured. So all you need to concentrate on is your miniature and they'll be absolutely perfect for Marvel Crisis Protocol um, because they're like street scenes and stuff like that. They've got jerry cans and uh, trash cans and trash and street garbage on them. And they're already pre-painted, uh, so it's just a question of gluing the miniatures on. Uh, we'll put a link down in the um, description below as well. And um, so if you follow that, you can uh, check them out for yourselves until the next review. Um, hopefully, which should be sometime very, very shortly, because I'm waiting for Thor being delivered. Right, okay, I've ranted on too much. Thanks for tuning in. And... Um, Keep your eye on Gamers Web for more updates on Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, also, if you fancy, if you live in America and you can make your way to uh, Chicago uh, at the end of March, um, Adepticon is on and they're having a massive painting competition called The Worthy. Details will be in the link down in the description. Um, 
for the painting competition. This is for the guys at uh, Atomic Mask Games. The first prize is a massive uh, statue, uh, like the Sideshow uh, collectible statues of Odin sat on a throne. It is absolutely huge. It's probably about five foot, about four feet tall, three foot, three foot tall, I'd say, not five feet tall. It's about three feet tall. And there's only, um, they're only available if you win this competition, which is um, the Marvel Crisis Protocol Miniature Painting Competition. There's two finals, one in America, one in Europe. The one in America is at Adepticon, which is at the end of March, and the one in Europe is at, um, Games, at UK Games Expo which is the last weekend in May. Uh, and you basically, you follow the instructions uh, on the thing. You've got three categories, uh, three main categories. You've got single miniature, dual, and team or squad. And they've all the height restrictions for the dimensions for the miniatures are on there as well. So worth keeping in mind and worth looking at because everybody who enters gets a limited edition pack for entering the competitions. Right, as always, I've been Mark. And thank you for tuning in. Excelsior.